I do think there's a squatch in these woods. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go, chapter 13, lesson number two. Moving on now to look at the Euclidean algorithm and using it to find the greatest common divisor. So, the greatest common divisor, which is also called the highest common factor, of two integers, a and b is the largest integer which divides into them both exactly without a remainder. Highest common factors is something you have been doing for years, but we're gonna call it the greatest common divisor. The notation, a comma b in brackets is used to denote the greatest common divisor of a and b. Let's take an example that you would have done years ago. Let's say we wanted to find the highest common factor or greatest common divisor of both 12 and 30. Well, the first thing you probably did was you thought about the factors of 12. And the factors of 12, you could have 1 times 12 to make 12. You could have 2 times 6. You could have 3 times 4. So this is all the factors. This is everything you can divide 12 by that does not leave a remainder. You would also have to get the factors or divisors of 30. And again, think of two numbers that would multiply to make 30. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. All of these numbers will therefore be the factors of 30. It's everything you can divide 30 by that does not leave a remainder. You can see that the greatest common divisor or the highest common factor would be, brilliant, the highest number that is in them both will be 6. There's a 6 here and there is a 6 here. There is no other number which appears in this list and this list that is higher. So that would be the greatest common divisor. Because of that, we will write, well, it says up here, the notation a comma b in brackets. So a and b are the two numbers that you start off with. Here, well, here, we've got the greatest common divisor of 12 and 30. So we'd have in brackets 12 and 30. That greatest common divisor is 6. So we write that equals six. This seems very, very easy and it does not seem like it should be an advanced higher maths. Can anybody think why it maybe is though? What would make this slightly harder? Brilliant. It would be harder if your numbers were bigger. So problem, if A and B are larger, it's often difficult to find all of their factors. You'd be there forever writing them down, trying to work them out. and. To save you time rather than you sitting there forever, there is a quick way of doing it. You can find the greatest common divisor using what is known as the Euclidean algorithm. So let's look at an example. Example 1, find the greatest common divisor of 140 and 252. So again, in other words, it just means what's the highest common factor. If you think about the factors of 140, think about the factors of 252, what's the biggest one that would be in them both? Again, these numbers are bigger, so it's going to be hard thinking of all the factors of 140 and all the factors of 252. So the way you do it is this. What you do is you first express the larger number, this 252, in terms of the smaller number. So you will say 252 equals, and you start with that 140, and you think, what do you times that by? How many 140s are in 252? Obviously it's one, so it's 140 times one. There is a remainder and the remainder is 112, so you can say it's 140 times one plus the 112. Once you've done that, you want to work your way down. So you next express the answer, express this 140 in terms of the remainder. So take that 140, that's what we start with. So we'd say 140 would equal well, that's going to be the remainder, the 112 times what? In other words, how many 112s are in 140? That's obviously one, so it's 112 times one. Again, you are needing a remainder, and the remainder this time will be 28. Brilliant, so you can say it's plus 28. Next, what you do, again, you're wanting to use this 112. So the 112, you want to express it in terms of Perfectly right, it's going to be in terms of the 28. So you can say that 112 would equal, and that's going to be 28 times what? Well, how many 28s are in 112? Perfectly right, it's going to be 4. Uh, there will be a remainder of, well, 28 times 4 is 112, so there will be a remainder of 0. 
Because of that, because the remainder is now a zero, you can stop. The remainder is now zero and the greatest common divisor is just the last non-zero remainder. So we had both of these numbers as the remainder, the 112 and the 28, and the answer will be the last one that is not zero. So the last remainder that was not zero was that 28. So you can say the greatest common divisor, again using the notation, put the two numbers in brackets, comma between them, that will equal 28. So that is the highest common factor or greatest common divisor of those two numbers. Example two, let's try it again. This is the working that you would have to do. So let's miss out all the sentences in between. So example two, find the greatest common divisor of 132 and 424. Once again, you want to start this by taking the larger number, the 424, and expressing it in terms of the smaller number, the 132. So you start this by thinking how many 132s are in 424. On well, the calculator, you could should just divide that. If you divide that, you're going to get three point something, which means it will fit in three. If you do 132 times 3, work out what you'd have to add on to make 424, that will be your remainder. So it'll be 424 equals 132 times 3 plus 28. What we then do is we take that number and we're wanting to express that in terms of the remainder. So we express 132 in terms of 28. So we say 132 would equal 28 times what? How many 28s are in 132? Again, you could divide it with a calculator. You end up with four point something, so it means you would fit in four. The remainder works out to be, this time, 20. So 132 equals 28 times four plus 20. We're now wanting to take the 28 and again express that in terms of the remainder. So 28 will equal and it's going to be 20 times what? And again, what would the remainder be? Well, that's obviously 20 times one, and you'd have a remainder of eight. Again, you want to take the 20, and you want to express that in terms of the remainder. So next line, you will say 20 would equal, perfect, it's gonna be eight times two, and then plus four. Once again, you want to take that number, take the eight, and express that in terms of the remainder, express that in terms of four. So you will say eight equals, well, that's going to be four times two with a remainder of zero. Perfect. Woo! We've made it to the remainder of zero. Because the remainder is zero, we now stop. And again, the greatest common divisor is the last non-zero remainder. So we've got all of these numbers as the remainders. We've got the 28, 28, 4, and 0. And the answer is this one. It's the last remainder that is not a 0. So we can say the greatest common divisor of 132 and 424 is 4. Woo! Example 3, find the greatest common divisor of 280 and 117. So to start this, we do the exact same thing as the other examples. Take the larger number, the 280, and express it in terms of the smaller number. So 280 will equal, well, that would be 117 times something plus a remainder. How many 117s can you fit into 280? Two. Perfect. And what would the remainder be? Brilliant. The remainder would be 46. Fantastic. We now take that 117 and we express that in terms of the remainder, express that in terms of 46. So 117 will equal 46 times what? How many 46s can you fit into 117? Again, if you're unsure, just use a calculator, divide it. You end up with two point something, which means you'd fit in two. Double the 46, work out what you'd add on to get the 117. That would be your remainder. It works out to be 25. So you can say 117 equals 46 times 2 plus 25. We now take the 46 and again express that in terms of the remainder. So 46 will equal how many 25s are in 46? Good. It's just going to be a 1 and you'd have a remainder of 21. Brilliant. So it'll be 25 times 1 plus 21. We don't have a remainder of zero, so we keep on going. Take the 25 now and express that in terms of 21. So 25 will equal, well, that's obviously 21 times 1 with a remainder of, you got it, the remainder of 4. Take the 21 and we want to express that in terms of 4. 
You got it. Well done. So, we could say 21 would equal. That's going to be four times what? How many fours are in 21? Five. You're too good. Well done, Claire. And with a remainder of one. Perfect. After that, you want to use the four, and we want to express that in terms of the remainder. So it's going to be four and one this time. So four will equal, well, that's going to be one times what? Well, it's just going to be one times four with a remainder of, perfect, you've got the remainder of zero. Woo! That's what we want! You do indeed, you want a remainder of zero. So since the remainder is zero, we stop, and the greatest common divisor will be the last non-zero remainder. So we've got all these remainders. We've got the zero, the one, the four, the 21, 25, and 46. But the last one working our way down that was not zero was one. So we can say the greatest common divisor, again, putting the two numbers in brackets with a comma, that will be equal to one. Note, if the greatest common divisor of the two integers does work out to be one, what you can say about them is that the integers are said to be co-prime or relatively prime. Ooh, fancy. Try some of these examples on page 73 in the Unit 3 booklet. Good luck with finding the greatest common divisor using the Euclidean algorithm. Have fun. See ya. Woo.